The story of Vagabond follows Miyamoto Musashi, a real historical figure and sword saint in Japanese history. The manga itself is fictional, of course, but one of the reasons it's so powerful and resonates so well is because the story is rooted in reality. Miyamoto is very human, but he sets out to become an invincible swordsman, and as it's said very often throughout the series, as the most powerful man under the sun. And while this of course has meanings associated with Japan being the land of the rising sun, it also implies that once dusk comes and the sun disappears, there's another part of yourself that you must deal with. The mind. And of course, this leads into an incredibly philosophical and introspective look into Musashi's growth as a character that makes the series so special. That despite beginning as a wild animal, locally being understood to be strong, after being thrown into the wider world, Musashi is forced to understand how small his idea of power was. That after being compared to other wise men, master swordsmen, and monks under the sun, he is nothing. And thus, the master of not just his body, but his mind, is the real journey of Vagabond and what makes it my favorite manga. Before I keep going, if you enjoy manga or anime and want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe. Enjoy the video. Vagabond, as I said, is very philosophical. Through Musashi, you're left to wonder about what your place in the world, the universe, is. Many times, swordsmanship is compared to the fluidity of the ocean just clearing your mind and letting the waves control your movements. And just as much as swordsmanship is compared to an art in Vagabond, you're also made to realize that killing is a crime. Which is redundant, of course, in this day and age to say, but many feudal Japanese-focused manga forget that randomly challenging and killing a man in a sword fight is a crime at the end of the day. And as Musashi goes on his journey and fights and kills men to improve his fighting skill, his mental understanding of himself increases just as much as his notoriety does. Is slicing other people down truly the way to become invincible? Is trial by combat the path to becoming a better human? More so than learning through the combat itself, Musashi finds something new in each enemy he challenges. It's a battle of ideas, lifestyles, mentalities, philosophies. It's more than just a sword fight. And through it all, he also learns about the fragility of life, the importance of understanding your mortality. Musashi is forced to question whether dying in battle is the end that he wants, whether a life of fighting has an end. Throughout the story as he travels, he's chased by men who want his reputation, who want to fight him. And just as this will never stop until he's beaten, his mind continues to wander and wonder whether there is an end to all of this. Musashi eventually understands himself to be a single aspect of the universe that has been made into what it is now by billions of different moving factors. Is cutting down men all he was meant for? Is this, at the end of the day, the impact he will have on the universe? Musashi also has a best friend and rival of sorts, who is never strong in the sense of the word. He often lies his way through situations and puts on a persona to become strong. It parallels what Musashi is doing, going on a real story of self-discovery compared to this artificial, shallow continuation of life, both of which follow men seeking the idea of strength. Rather than being character-oriented, Vagabond is based around everyone's different idea of what is strength. And on top of it all, the art is absolutely breathtaking. You're really thrown into the nature and landscapes of feudal Japan. And much of the story of Vagabond is spent wandering through nature. It depicts the freedom and wildness of the mind, and exploring the world is just as fundamental as exploring and understanding every facet of oneself before you can master your strength. If you're looking for great art, a dynamic and introspective main character, or just a great manga to start, I highly recommend Vagabond. The manga is absolutely incredible, and the fact that it never got a proper ending is really a shame. The story is on indefinite hiatus, which is truly the saddest ending you can see in such an incredible manga. But regardless, the story itself is utterly addicting. As always, this has been the Anime Culture Corner. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for future in-depth show, manga, and character analyses.